Will religion still exist in a hundred years? The sheer diversity of religious beliefs held by different groups of human beings is a testament to both our creativity and our incredibly judgmental nature. Don't eat that particular kind of crab on a Thursday afternoon, or my purple sky squid will grope your firstborn son for all eternity. Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4. But is this way of thinking on the way out? Are pious individuals on the decline? Will religion still exist in a hundred years? Number 4. God is dead. This was the proclamation of 19th century German philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche, who published this quote in his 1882 work, The Gay Science. If ever a journal was going to annoy hardline religious folk, this was it. Nietzsche believed that when God was no more, the human race no longer had any kind of order to believe in. God's death, whether it occurs literally as a celestial being or figuratively as a concept within society, would lead to the rejection of absolute morals and a slide into nihilism. Essentially, when everyone realizes there's no old dude in the sky judging them for beating off in the shower, humanity would lose all sense of purpose and start behaving like a bunch of lunatics. Nietzsche labeled Christianity as being fundamentally nihilistic, since the removal of one element, God, causes the whole tower of cards to come crumbling down. Instead, Nietzsche believed, we should strive to seek deeper meaning and more complex values than those which Christianity, and indeed all religions, have bound us to for centuries. But is this something humanity as a whole is progressing towards? Or are we turning backwards? Number 3. God is Alive Nietzsche's God is Dead statement was made back in 1882, and it was repeated on the cover of Time magazine in 1966 for an article on the decline of religiosity in America. This trend has continued, with Americans' belief in God dropping 10%, American Christian numbers falling by 20%, and the importance of religion in people's thinking by 14% in the 50 years since. These figures were taken from research combined by Gallup and the Pew Institute, and the latter also has predicted some interesting trends in world religion over the next 100 years. According to Pew, religion is on the rise in every part of the world, bar the West. By 2100, Islam, which is the fastest growing religion, is expected to overtake Christianity to hold a share of 35% of the world's population, compared to 34% for Christian believers. All groups are expected to increase their share with the exception of two, Buddhists and non-religious people. Both of these have notoriously low birth rates, especially atheists and agnostics. And for this reason, it seems unlikely that the mass rejection of religion will take place within the next century. Unless, of course, non-believers start filling their faith holes with regular orgies. Pious folk go to pray on a Sunday. Why can't atheists and agnostics head to a sex dungeon for a little 4 on 12 action? I would attend the heck out of that sermon. Number 2. The European God is dead. According to the Pew predictions, it seems unthinkable that religion will fail to persist over the course of the next century. However, for all intents and purposes, religion might not exist depending on where you live. The aforementioned Pew Institute predicts that Europe will be the only region on Earth where Christian numbers will have fallen by the year 2050. Muslim worshippers are predicted to rise, mostly due to their high fertility rate and relatively young age but the leading group will be those with no religious beliefs whatsoever. Bosnia-Herzegovina, Germany, France, the Netherlands, the Republic of Macedonia, and the United Kingdom may all lose their Christian majority by 2050, with the UK expected to have larger numbers of non-believers than Christians by 2060. By this time, Pew predicts that the number of world non-believers will drop by 13% from 16% today. This drop will mostly affect nations outside the Western world. And while this is happening, the increasing populations of religious countries like Indonesia, Nigeria, India, and Pakistan means we'll see more religious activity in the remainder of the world. These predicted figures could change drastically in the coming century, though, as it's doubtful anyone would have foreseen the UK's rapid decline in religious beliefs over the past hundred years. Quentin Atkinson, a psychologist at Auckland University, points out how religious Japan, 
Canada, South Korea, Uruguay, and most European nations once were, only for those nations to now report some of the lowest belief rates in the world. He ascribes this change to their strong educational and social security systems, as well as relatively low levels of inequality and poverty. An insightful quote made by Mr. Atkinson sums up this shift nicely, as he believes that religion seems to decline in popularity when people are less scared about what might befall them. Number 1. God is a hipster. Despite the decline of religion in the Western world, something else has begun to rise in its place. Spiritualism. Spiritual beliefs are nothing new, of course. Sacred rocks and magic horse members that can cure the diseased have been around for millennia. I have six inside me right now. But what is interesting is just how many people are subscribing to a more spiritual mindset and, now they're not forced to conform to a certain set of prescribed beliefs, what kind of stuff they're starting to believe in. Between the years 2007 and 2014, the number of atheists who reported having deep spiritual beliefs about the universe grew from 37 to 54 percent. Meaningful perspectives related to mental peace and well-being have also become popular, with self-described spiritual gurus taking notice of this trend and lining their pockets in the process. In the United States, the self-help industry rakes in $13 billion a year and yoga makes an astonishing $27 billion. Just think about that. A $27 billion industry has been built around the spiritual experience of stretching in Lycra, and this is just the start. Other modern philosophies range from the ideas of the self and your relationship to others, to beliefs based on the environment and the nature of reality. There is also a growing belief among those searching for extraterrestrials that we should prepare ourselves spiritually for the inevitable arrival of our future alien masters. And there's another even wilder set of spiritual ideas concerning the future impact of artificial intelligence on the human race. We're going to investigate these concepts in our bonus video, What Mankind Will Believe in the Future, which you can watch on our Patreon page at patreon.com slash strange mysteries. For a $2 a month pledge, which you can cancel at any time, you'll get to watch this and all of our bonus content, which goes deeper and darker into every topic than YouTube allows. If you don't want to donate, then that's bullshit. We know you wanted more. Strange mysteries on YouTube and our Patreon bonus videos weren't enough to quench your search for truth, to give you that sense of awe and wonder again, to go past what you thought was the end, to give you the answers you seek but which only lead to more questions. That's why we just up the stakes. Chemicals of reality. Reality, consciousness, brains. What else is there? Ask yourself that question. Perhaps that's all there really is, but perhaps everything else is found within a place where these ideas, these things, overlap. Some thing, some place that is undefinable. To many people, altering certain chemicals in their brains produces what they would simply call hallucinations. In fact, what we're going to discuss specifically used to be called the businessman's trip, as one could enjoy it. Come down and put your pants back on in the time it takes to eat lunch. It wasn't taken seriously. Well, unless, of course, you started digging. And some people, including us, did. Already, though, to many people, this chemical is special amongst others. Very special. To them, it represents something more meaningful and incredible, as if it's the gateway to the next level of consciousness, the ticket to a higher reality barely explored by most humans. It is the entry point to a new reality visited by only a select few whose minds have become enlightened through the use of this exotic substance. For this reason, it's commonly referred to as the spirit molecule. But is its reputation as a mystical mind opener deserved? Or is it and everything it represents just a load of bullshit? We look at, investigate, and dive deeply into nearly all available research regarding this question from nearly every angle feasible. And in the course of doing so, stumble upon unexplainable patterns, correlations, and neurological evidence for a reality existing beyond this one. Watch this hour-long Strange Mysteries premium video, Chemicals of Reality, as well as many more to come by becoming an elite premium member of our Patreon at patreon.com slash strange mysteries.